Hey guys, welcome back. So today we'll be going over equivalent and non-equivalent fractions using three different methods. So let's look at our first example. So let's say we had three over four and six over eight. How do I know if these fractions are equivalent? Now the first method that you can use is to turn your fraction into a decimal and then you compare your decimals. Four goes into three zero times. It does not go in. So I'm going to add a decimal here, a decimal, and a zero. What about four goes into 30? How many times does four go into 30? And that's going to be seven times. Four times seven is 28. 30 minus 28 is going to equal two. I'm going to bring my zero down. Four goes into 20 now five times. Four times five is 20. 20 minus 20 is going to equal zero. So my first fraction here equals 0 0.75. Now let's look at the next fraction. So we have the 8 here and my 6 is on the inside. 8 does not go into 6. However, 8 goes into 60 now how many times? It goes in 7 times as well. 8 times 7 is 56. 60 minus 56 is going to equal 4. I'm going to bring my zero down here. Eight goes into 45 times. Eight times five is 40. 40 minus 40 is going to equal zero. So again, for this fraction here, six over eight in decimal form also equals 0 0.75. So as you can see, because we have the same decimal form for these two fractions here, then we know that yes, they are both equivalent. Let's look at method two. The second method to see if your fractions are equal is to cross multiply. So I'm just gonna put here cross multiply. So let's look at our same example, three over four and six over eight. So let's go ahead and cross multiply now. So we have three times eight, this is gonna equal 24. And then you have four times six, this is also going to equal 24. And as you can see, 24 equals 24. So yes, we know these two fractions are indeed equal. The third method that you can use to see if your fractions are equivalent is to use the cancellation property. And when you're doing this, all you're doing is simplifying your fraction to its lowest terms to make sure that you do get the same fraction on both sides. So let's go back to the same example that we were looking at. Let's look at the three over four and the six over eight. So let's look at my three over four first. I cannot simplify my three over four any further, so I'm just gonna leave this fraction alone just the way it is. However, I can simplify my six over eight and reduce it to its lowest terms. So my numerator, I'm gonna get two times three because I know that's gonna give me six. And my denominator here, I'm gonna get two times four. And by looking at this example here, you're gonna see that your twos here are going to cancel out. And then you're gonna be left with three over four, which is the same as what we have here on this side. Another way that you can solve this part here for method three is I know that two goes into both the six and the eight. So my numerator, I know I'm going to get three. And then my denominator, I know I'm going to get four. Let's look at this example here, three over eight and 18 over 48. How do we know if these two fractions are equivalent? So let's go ahead and solve the three over eight first. We're going to put this in decimal format first. So eight does not go into three, we know that. So I'm gonna add my decimal, decimal and zero. Eight goes into 30 though, three times. Eight times three is going to be 24. 30 minus 24 is gonna equal six. I'm gonna bring another zero down. Eight goes into 60 now, how many times? Seven times, eight times seven is going to be 56. 60 minus 56 is gonna equal four. We know eight doesn't go into four for sure, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring the decimal down. Eight goes into 40 now five times. Eight times five is 40, and you have 40 minus 40, this is gonna equal zero. So your decimal here is going to be 0 0.375. Now let's see if I have space 48 and 18. All right, 48 does not go into 18, so I'm gonna add my decimal, decimal zero. 48 now goes into 180 now three times. 48 times three is gonna be 144. 
180 minus 144 is going to equal 36. 48 doesn't go into 36, so I'm going to bring my zero down. 48 goes into 360 now seven times. 48 times seven, this is going to equal 336. 360 minus 336, this is going to equal 24. I'm now going to bring my zero down. So 48 goes into 240 now. It goes in five times. 48 times five, this is going to equal 240. And then 240 minus 240 is going to equal zero. So for this fraction here, it's also going to equal 0 0.375 as well. So yes, we know that these two fractions are indeed equivalent. So let's try method number two. I'm going to cross multiply. 3 times 48 is going to equal 144. And then 8 times 18, this is also going to equal 144. 144 equals 144. So we know, yes, these two fractions are indeed equivalent. So now let's try method number 3. So 3 over 8 and 18 over 48. So we know for my 3 over 8, I cannot simplify any further, so I'm just going to leave this fraction alone as 3 over 8. However, let's look at the 18 over 48. Yes, I can simplify this further. My numerator, I know that 6 times 3 is going to give me 18. And my denominator, I also know that 6 times 8, this is going to give me 48. So notice here that my 6s here are going to cancel out, and you're going to be left with 3 over 8, which is what we have here. Let's look at this example here, negative 2 over 5 and 6 over negative 15. So the first method, we're going to turn into decimal format. So 5 on the outside, 2 is on the inside. 5 does not go into 2, so I'm going to add my decimal, decimal 0. 5 now goes into 24 times. 5 times 4 is going to equal 20. 20 minus 20 is going to equal 0. So your decimal format over here is going to equal negative 0.1. Four. So let's look at my 6 over negative 15 here. So I'm going to divide. 15 does not go into 6, so I'm going to add my decimal, decimal 0. 15 goes into 64 times. 15 times 4 is going to equal 60. 60 minus 60 is going to equal 0. So my final answer, my decimal form here, is also going to be negative 0.4. So we know that these two fractions are indeed equivalent because we have the same decimal here. Let's look at method number two. We cross multiply. So negative 2 over 5 and then 6 over negative 15. So if I were to cross multiply, negative 2 times negative 15 is going to give me a positive 30. And then we have here 5 times 6. This is also going to give me 30. So 30 equals 30. Yes, we know that these two fractions are indeed equivalent. Now let's look at the cancellation property, method number three. So if I have negative two over five here, and then here we have six over negative 15. Notice here that my negative two over five is already reduced to its lowest terms. So I cannot simplify that any further. I'm gonna leave that one alone. However, if I look at my six over 15, we know that we can simplify this. My numerator can be simplified into two times three. And then my denominator, this can be simplified into three times five. Notice here in my numerator and denominator, we know that the threes are going to cancel out and I am left with two over negative five in my denominator, all right? Which is the same as what we have here. Let's look at our next example, 1 over 4 and 3 over 9. Let's check to see if these two fractions are equivalent. So method 1, we're going to turn it into decimal form. So 4 and 1. 4 does not go into 1, so I'm going to add my 0. 4 does, however, go into 10 two times. 4 times 2 is going to equal 8. 10 minus 8 is going to equal 2. I'm going to bring my 0 down. 4 goes into 25 times. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 20 is going to equal 0. So your decimal form for this fraction here is going to be 0 0.25. Now let's look at 3 over 9. Let's turn this into a decimal. 9 does not go into 3. However, 9 does go into 30. 
three times. Nine times three is 27. 30 minus 27 is going to equal three. I'm going to bring my zero down. Nine goes into 30 again three times. Through nine times three is 27. 30 minus 27 is going to equal three. We know nine doesn't go into three. So I'm going to bring the zero down again. Nine goes into 33 times. Nine times three is 27. 30 minus 27 is going to equal three. If I try one more time, let's see, nine goes into 33 times, nine times three, 27. So as you can see, we have 0 0.333 repeating all the way down. So my fraction here is gonna equal 0 0.333 repeating. So based on these two examples here, we know that these two fractions are not equivalent because my decimal numbers are not the same. We have 0 0.25 here and 0 0.333 repeating here. So we know these two fractions are not equivalent. Let's look at method number two. So we have one times nine is gonna equal nine, and then four times three, this is gonna equal 12. So 12 and nine, these two do not equal. So again, we know using method number two that those two fractions here are not equivalent. And now let's look at method number three. Let's do the cancellation property. I cannot simplify one over four any further, so I'm just going to leave this alone. However, my three over nine, I can simplify my three over nine. Three goes into both the three and the nine. So my numerator, we're going to get one, and my denominator, we're going to get three. So notice here we have one over three, and then here we have one over four. So again, we know that these two fractions are not equivalent. Let's look at these two examples here, 5 over 10 and 4 over 10. So let's see if these two fractions are equal. So I'm going to put my 10 here, my 5 here. 10 does not go into 5. However, 10 does go into 50 five times. 10 times 5 is going to equal 50. 50 minus 50 is going to equal 0. So the decimal form for here is going to be 0.5. Now let's look at my four over 10. My 10's on the outside, four on the inside. So I'm gonna add my decimal, decimal, and zero. 10 does go into 40 four times. 10 times four is gonna equal 40. 40 minus 40 is gonna equal zero. So your decimal form here is gonna be 0 0.4. And looking at these two examples here, we can see that these two fractions are not equivalent because I have 0 0.5 here and I have 0 0.4 here. So they are not the same number. So we know these two fractions are not equivalent. Let's look at method number two, five, 10, and then four, 10 here. And we're gonna cross multiply. Five times 10 is 50, and then 10 times four is gonna be 40. 40 does not equal 50. So again, we see that these two fractions are not equivalent. And let's try one more, method three, five over 10, and then four over 10 here. So if I were to simplify this, I can simplify my five because five goes into both, five and five. My numerator, you're gonna get one. Your denominator, you're gonna get two. And if I look here at my four over 10, so my numerator, we're gonna get two times two. My denominator, you're gonna get two times five. And we can see that these twos are going to cancel out. And you're going to be left with here 2 over 5. So here we got 1 over 2. And then here we got 2 over 5. Because I did not get the same fraction, again, we see that this example here, these two fractions are not equivalent. All right? So that is all for today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.